Welcome back to QB Film Room. In installment number three of off-season roster previews for quarterback rooms around the National Football League, we've got the AFC South. And um, we're going to start out with the Houston Texans. So Deshaun Watson, who will be entering his fourth year, okay, he is, uh, you know, he's already reached two Pro Bowls. Last year, Watson ended up throwing for 3,852 yards, 26 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. His 2018 production was along those same lines as well, and he's really performed well in the biggest of moments. For Houston, he's really carried that offense, you know, for quite some time, and he's really lived up to his uh, pre-draft hype. Uh, so Watson's entering a year where he's scheduled to make $2.4 million in 2020. Um, obviously, Pat Mahomes, as we're recording this video, Mahomes recently signed his mega deal, all right? And word on the street is that Watson is right behind him. Mahomes and Watson will be signing a deal shortly. You know, we don't know exactly when, but he's going to be signing a new deal. So as of right now, he's making $2.4 million on the cap this year, but that will most likely change shortly within the next few weeks. Behind Deshaun will be A.J. McCarron, who's already entering his seventh year in the league, which is, I mean, I felt like McCarron was getting ready for the draft just last year, but it's been seven years now. Uh, so McCarron signed a deal this offseason to return as the backup quarterback to Deshaun. He'll be making $3.75 million in terms of guarantees. It was a one-year, $4 million deal. One year, four million dollar deal total. Um, so, if something were to happen to Watson, knock on wood, you know, a lot of people around the league feel comfortable with AJ McCarron. Obviously, Houston does as well, being able to step in and right the ship. And he, you know, he certainly proved to be able to do that with the Cincinnati Bengals about four or five years ago, 2015. Alex McGo, third year quarterback in the league, he, uh, he started out in Seattle. As an undrafted free agent, then he was with uh, he's he spent some time with Jacksonville last year, and then he got brought over to Houston, signed a futures deal, so he'll be competing for that third quarterback spot. And if he makes the roster six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for Alex Nick Tiano out of UT Chattanooga, rookie quarterback, undrafted free agent, he'll be competing with Miguel for the third quarterback job. Uh, six hundred ten thousand dollars if Tiano wins that job. So it should be an interesting competition be between those two. Indianapolis, they signed Phillip Rivers to a one-year, $25 million contract. Rivers will be entering his 17th year in the league. He's made, you know, he's, he's made $218 million. And then after this year, obviously at 25 to that, that's all guaranteed for him this year. He's going to reunite with Frank Reich, offensive coordinator for the Colts, also was in San Diego with Rivers. So... They're looking for Rivers to really be uh, injected into this, you know, into this team, really, and to be the leader on offense and to be able to make throws and to be able to uh, really perform much better than Jacoby Brissett did last year for them. Um, so, um, you know, at this point, Rivers, you know, obviously physically he's declining a little bit, but he, you know, he can still certainly beat you with his arm, whether it's via touch, anticipation, or ball placement. Um, so they're expecting a lot from him. Jacoby Brissett, if you remember, now he's entering his fifth year. He's got $14.8 million if he's on the roster this year. Seven mil, or, uh, $7 million of that, fourteen point eight for Brissett, was already paid to him in the form of a roster bonus, March 22nd of this year. Um, so Jacoby signed when Andrew Luck abruptly announced his retirement, and he capitalized on that opportunity. And he was able to make some pretty good money last year, and then even this year. Um, so from a roster standpoint, it's going to be a tough decision whether to keep Jacoby or to let him go, you know, around September 1st when the final cuts take place. So I'm not really sure what they're going to do yet because – with the COVID environment, you know, if something were to happen to say Rivers or maybe even Chad Kelly, now you're just left with a rookie, say, hypothetically, Eason, to take over. So it it might serve the Colts well to keep Brissett 
as an insurance policy, even though it will be a very expensive one. Chad Kelly's entering year four, second in Indianapolis. Uh, you know, if he ends up making the 53, he'll make $750,000 this year. Zero of that is guaranteed. Jacob Eason, the quarterback who they selected in round four this year, um, you know, if he's rostered this year, $1.3 million for him. Part of that will include the signing bonus, okay, because 732000 of that $1.3 million for 2020 for Eason has already been paid out to him. So he's going to make more in the lines of six hundred to 700000 for his 2020 salary. So, uh, but, you know, the Colts drafted Eason expecting him to be the quarterback of the future for them. We go south down to Jacksonville, and this quarterback room extremely, extremely light cap hits for 2020. So we've got Gardner Minshew re returning, excuse me, Minshew the second returning in his second year, obviously. He played a ton last year for the team. He's scheduled to make $675,000 this year for his salary. Okay. Mike Glennon, who they just signed recently to come in as a free agent quarterback, scheduled to make $1.1 million if he's rostered this year, $137,500. That is guaranteed. Certainly could be a situation where they feel Mike Glennon maybe isn't up to snuff and they let him loose, or it could be a situation where they want to keep Mike Glennon around as that veteran insurance policy. And, you know, and most likely, I think that will end up being the case. So, I, you know, I think Mike Glennon makes his team. And then they've got Joshua Dobbs, who is going to be playing out his rookie deal here. And $825,000 for a salary if he makes the team. He was traded to the Jaguars last year from Pittsburgh early on in the season after Foles went down. The Steelers traded Dobbs. Big Ben went down. So it's like, had they just held on to Dobbs, he probably would have played quite a bit last year for Pittsburgh. And then Jake Luton is the guy who the Jaguars selected in the draft as a, you know, a quarterback with a high ceiling moving forward, possibly a guy who could develop into a starting, a starting caliber franchise guy. You know. So Jake Luton, $610,000 this year. There's no way the Jags are letting Luton go. And then finally, the Tennessee Titans only have three quarterbacks rostered, you know, as of today. Ryan Tannehill signed a new deal. His cap hit in 2020 is $17.5 million just in salary. And then his signing bonus was $20 million. So technically, you know, he's, he's making a lot of money this year. He's making, you know, he's scheduled to make $17.5 million and then the signing bonus $20. That's $37.5 million. Logan Woodside, $610,000 if he's rostered. Zero, that's guaranteed. And then Cole McDonald, the guy who they drafted late, $610,000. Um, then he actually had over 100000 of that was guaranteed, rather. So that's wrong for McDonald. So, um, you know, both of those guys, McDonald and Woodside, have a really good chance of making the team, you know, honestly. Um, now, if they elect to maybe keep Woodside and let McDonald be cut, you know, there's a possibility that somebody else would scoop him up and he wouldn't be available to their practice squad. So most likely that'll happen, but that's a pretty good situation to be in if you're Logan Woodside or Cole McDonald in terms of the quarterback room there.